tourist and the chief biosonary officer of this company that is quite interesting, Psychosotical, so a mix between psychedelic and pharmaceutical, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're going to talk about this uh, in in a minute, and you are what we call now. It's 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 really an interesting uh, thing. Concierge to the star for psychedelics, and of course, yeah, we know you because you're the award-winning um, uh, filmmaker uh, uh, and the reality of truth. But uh, one of the things that was funny is I was actually trying to find the, the kind of slogan and then I found that Playboy gave you one already. The man who wants to change the world with psychedelics says it all. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a bit uh, how do you want to change the world? Yeah, you know, I, I'm looking at society right now and, you know, things look pretty dire and I think that you know, as I analyze what steps could be taken to change course, the really the only one I see personally is psychedelics, where, you know, my observation has been that when people have a deep psychedelic experience, when they emerge, they emerge with a lot more empathy. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's very difficult to get increased empathy quickly. You know, usually you have to have like a near death experience or something to instantly sure. get more empathy. But to be able to do psychedelics, to get that increased empathy, my feeling is if we had a critical mass of people who raise their consciousness in that way, we could look around and really solve any kind of problem that we have as a society. And so, you know, thankfully we have this opportunity. This These things have been around for millions of years. Humans have been interacting with them for tens of thousands of years. True. And you know, 1971 in the United States, they made this illegal, uh, you know, to be, uh, in their, their words, it was about, um, it was about safety at the time. Yeah. We were, we were killing our brain with, uh, with those substances. Yes. Yeah. And, well, they just, you know, and they didn't really know if they were safe, you know, back in 1970s. So now here we are and, you know, 50 years later, millions of people have had this experience many with great benefit and now it's kind of time for us all to demand the right to have these substances for the mental health crisis that we find ourselves in and so the the goal of psychoceutical the company is to make this that much easier for people to experience and Hold on a second, I lost your sound. Uh, we can't hear, oh, there we go. Now you're back, sorry for that. Okay. Yep, yeah, no problem. Um, you know, in order for the medical establishment and the government to take psychedelics as serious as they need to, these have to be in a format that people understand. And that's a psychoceutical, sort of the best of psychedelics meets the best of pharmaceuticals. And when I look at that, I say, okay, how do we make it, you know, how do we create something that the government and the medical establishment could be, you know, feel good about? Because for a doctor, they're not going to, you know, even if they know that psilocybin mushrooms, for example, are very healthy, uh, they don't want to tell somebody, hey, go home, take one cap and one stem and that's it happen, you know? Yeah. The and where it's going to come from as well, uh, as simple as that. Yes, absolutely. So the safety and efficacy, until we get that right, I don't think we can have mass adoption of psychedelics. Great. So psychoceutical has two very important delivery systems. I saw that, yes. Yeah, one of them, uh, Dr. Tutea developed at University of Michigan for cancer drugs is why he developed, is why they were developed and how they were developed. But the realization was that if we could use these delivery systems and deliver psychedelics in a safer and more effective way, maybe engineer out the psychedelic effect when needed, get rid of a lot of the negative side effects. If we can do that, then that puts us in a situation where a doctor could say, hey, you know what? I think you need some psilocybin or some MDMA. Here's a really safe way to do that. Oh, and here's the, here's the doctor. He's gonna, hi doctor. 
Hi, thanks nice for joining. Hi, nice, nice to see you. Hi, Zappy. Hey, hey. It was a little tricky. I know Dr. Today, you know, he's in the science lab. He's not, you know, on social media, you know, kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. But he's here. Okay. Thank you. I, yeah. I was able to navigate that. That's it. You made it. You know, you're a researcher. I had no doubt about it. You found a way. And you came just right in time, actually, because we were explaining, Zappi was explaining us uh, the process of uh, a, a psychedelic going into the society and maybe uh, giving an open door for a mental health uh, treatment and stuff like that. And, uh, and we were to the point I was asking Zappi, are the, the psychedelic problem that I, I, I've seen in my life is first, the people that are taking it, second the dose that are giving to them we don't know them and the third part is how it goes through the uh, uh through the brain without being like interrupted uh, in the liver or in the organism or whatsoever and it looks like you guys i've made up a certain technology that helps this to be ultra safe and goes um, across the uh, uh, blood-brain bar barrier as well. Um, so, doctor, right on time. Why don't you jump on it? <laughs> I've, I've discussed that. Essentially, two different technologies, and both are sort of addressing the issues that you just mentioned. So, one of the major things is trying to understand what is the best dosage for a particular person and making sure that we can deliver that dosage efficiently without causing any systematic uh, reactions within the body, any any sort of um, sort of a bad trip type of an experience um, or any any sort of any other maybe toxicity within the body. And, and so that is the, the major challenge to address. How do we systematically deliver these things in a very controlled manner without causing systemic reactions? And so there's two different technologies that we worked on that aim to address both of those where both are really targeting non-systemic delivery, meaning that it wouldn't go throughout the body. It would be only to specific cells uh, or specific areas within the body um, as would be needed. What that allows us to do is to use a much lower dosage that, that, that would be typically used and also have a much more, much faster delivery, much more targeted delivery and a very controlled um, sort of response, response to, uh, within the body. And so, the, the two, both the technologies that we have are, as I was saying, non-systemic. So one is on the application or towards the back of the neck, so which can really target the nerve receptors very close to the skin. So it's sort of a transdermal application. So you have essentially a cream that incorporates some of our proprietary molecules and those can essentially go in and, and target just those nerve endings. So you're not going throughout the entire body um, and so mm -hmm. you can a uh, much lower, uh, much lower dosage, much, much faster. So typically the period of action can be in a matter of minutes as opposed to, you know, typically some of these psychedelic drugs would take where from hours or to hours and for some for long periods of time as well. So here you can actually have action in the mat, maybe on the order of about 10 minutes or so, so which is of course, um, very, very powerful. And then you also have a much, much more, uh, sort of. Uh, tapered endpoint, so it sort of uh, goes away slowly, and you can sort of um, from from what we we've uh, been just looking at, seems like you can actually have a pretty good idea of you know when the the therapy is being diminished and when might be a good way to reapply um, that that therapy uh, on onto the neck. So, and of course, it's also very very simple to apply. It's, as I was saying, it's a transdermal cream, so very simple uh, can be can be applied in a very systematic way and in a very precise and easy way um, for any any sort of uh, therapy session um, that we would undergo. Uh, tell me, so if you lower the dose and you get to a certain target like that, so you can treat different type of mental issues or uh, problems, what about if, uh, and, and, and one of the things that uh, triggered my uh, curiosity here is the, the, the time of, like you said, 10 minutes. Let's pretend you increase that dose uh, dra uh, drastically and the, the effect is done in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Can we get to an overdose faster then or with the risk of that or is it? 
is yes. a bit okay. straight, great question. I, I think, you know, so one of the major things, of course, with any of these uh, psychedelic compounds or medicine in general, there's always the possibility of overdosing on any medical mm -hmm. product. I've yeah. even proven and you could overdose on, on that. On aspirin too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Important to sort of apply this in a very systematic and in a controlled environment. And, and as, as, you, as we all sort of know already, you know, any of these psychedelic therapies is typically going to be uh, combined with sort of psychotherapy in a psychotherapist's office anyway, because you want to deal with sort of the overall issues that mm -hmm. a with, might be dealing with. And so it has to be applied in a systemic manner. The whole advantage of our things, of our technologies, of course, as, as we're discussing faster, faster acting, but also a controlled release. So you know exactly how much is going to be delivered and then what time scale is that going to be delivered. So, so that's sort of into the technology in build. We sort of control, you know, what, how fast it's going to go in and how slowly it's going to release on the target site. Um, and so it should, it should always be, of course, given that we are talking about, you know, the medical applications of these compounds, it has to be delivered in a very controlled manner and applied in right. Yeah, 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 and the pathology. Uh, uh, yes, up here. Please. I was, yeah, I was just going to add, you know, that currently with psychedelics, you know, when you take it, the slow onset, you know, mushrooms can take 45 minutes to an hour to come on. It's like a lot of bad things can happen in that time where somebody, mm -hmm. goes, oh, it's not really working. Maybe I should. And it takes more. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, the fact that this works really quickly is very important because people want to get to the healing immediately but you know, mm -hmm. so lessen that window there but at the same time what's really exciting and i want dr tatea to talk about this is that with this uh pattern you're able to change the size and the shape of the particles as well and in dr tatea's research when you uh, use triangular shaped molecules those have a much better uptake than some other shaped molecules so that means that we could really use this in a much more targeted way and as dr tutsaya said you're giving somebody less of the medicine it's just more bioavailable so the opportunity so the, the the possibility of somebody taking too much now goes away the doctor feels a lot better right right really limit that um in, in your experience, it was not like that. It was more empiric when you help other people to get through a, a healing and process. You ha you were not backed up with this technology at that time, no? No, I wasn't. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, and, and I look at that and I think, you know, this is really where we're going to bring the masses, you know, because mm -hmm. the, the folks who come to me are typically in crisis, whether that's been, you know, Lamar Odom, the basketball player, or just, you know, uh, all kinds of, you know, celebrities and thought leaders and people who come to me. I just have had to use the tools that we've had. And now we have this opportunity to, you know, again, deliver it either with or without a psychedelic effect, not having those negative reactions in the body, the nausea, the dizziness, um, lethargy, all these kind of things. And so to engineer that out now, you know, people like my parents who are in their 80s, you know, are in a position to actually use and benefit from these uh, compounds. And Dr. Tutea's uh, patent also allows us to deliver a microdose in a way that is very unique because in the past, if you wanted to microdose, say something like ketamine, you would have to take it every hour or two. Right. You know, it's difficult for people to, you know, be compliant with the, any medication. So if you can use a psychoceutical, take it once, and then every half hour, or hour, whenever, however we want to take those layers off and release more medicine, somebody could just take it once and have a microdose throughout the day without having to think, oh, did I take it? And a lot of times, right. you know, with, with medications, that's also, you know, where people get it run into trouble is that they don't remember whether they took it. They wind up taking it again. And now they're, you know, with themselves in a tricky situation. So this is a huge breakthrough. I mean, you know, for me, when I realized what this was for the psychedelic industry, I was just like, wow, I just, you know, yeah. have to be part of it. 
But uh, tell me, so you spoke about microdosing, uh, uh, the way that you deliver, and I've heard so much about microdosing recently that was in contradiction with so many principles in science and from studies and uh, and and even uh, in the field, like people cutting stuff to do microdosing. When you say microdosing in your process, it's not the same understanding as microdosing as we generally understand it like my uh, a small part or a dilution of something it's more like a target dose delivered through the system and the patent uh, uh, process that you have is that correct or is is it clear what i'm asking or mm -hmm. yeah yeah yep and and what's different is that you know uh a, a, a microdose is described as, <clears throat> excuse me, subperceptual. So it's something mm -hmm. that you're taking where you're not, you know, having the effect. It's it's kind of like homeopathy where you take right. a little bit and it triggers your own system to, you know, understand how to work with that, that molecule. And so in this case, what's really beautiful is that uh, we get to... Uh, you know, make a microdose as small as possible because you're going to get as much benefit as you can from the, how the psychoceutical is delivered. And so we're, we keep going less and less and less quantity. We just are making this more targeted and more bioavailable. Bio -available. So I think it's going to be, you know, really the way that the medical establishment initially feels comfortable with psychedelics where they can say to somebody, hey, you're going to take this, uh, microdose it's going to be sub perceptual but yeah. you know as you do this yeah. over time you're going to you know have a benefit that's going to be you know cumulative and uh for mental health and all kinds of benefits and going that way i guess it's going to be out for the fda uh, approval and recognition since you're going to go in so uh, small dosages that uh, you're not going to get the, the trouble are you're in the process of getting the fda i, I would say Yep. That's a great point. Yeah. I mean, you know, we look at psychoceutical it, rather than, you know, being competitive with other psychedelic companies because we have a delivery system, we're calling it coopetition. So if a company <laughs> like, you know, let's say MindMed, uh, MindMed has a drug called 18MC that I invested in that company. <laughs> okay, come on. <laughs> so, you know, it, it is a really good company. They've got some great stuff going on, but, you know, if they're going to deliver their 18 MC in trials, if they were to use a psychoceutical to deliver it, they would be giving less of it. Their trials would be going better. And so we've been talking to everybody from, you know, from a field trip to a side nice. and you know, on and on about, hey, if you're going to do your trials, let us deliver in a psychoceutical format. You're just going to get better outcomes. And like you mentioned, not have the kind of problems with the FDA that you might have if you were you know, unknowingly giving somebody too much or going over some level. Perfect. Perfect answer, Zappi. Uh, doctor, yes. Uh, are you right? Yeah. Go ahead. Zappi there. And, and just to add, again, going back to what we were discussing earlier, again, reduces the chances of having any side effects, reduces the chance of having any toxicity, any, any sort of... Um, a bad experience is created with the drug, really focusing on the therapeutic benefits of the thing. What are the um, the bad effects of psychedelics? We're, we we talked about all the these benefits and the way that you have the process going through. Um, any issues? Are you confronted confronted to any travel burden or stuff that uh, are like refraining you for getting faster uh, into the public and getting this FDA approval and having this uh, available for everyone. You're in research, so you probably have a lot of ongoing stuff there. So I can I can generally talk about you know what the overall process is going to kind of look like before people actually get access to this. And in my opinion, there's sort of these four um, steps before this actually gets into everyone. For any any sort of psychedelic company, there are going to be these four steps that that go through. And certainly, FDA approval is step one, right? So as we're you know developing these drugs, we need to do these trials, show that it actually works. But that's only part of the story, right? But that that's the first step. 
The second step is all of the legal hurdles that are both on the federal level and on the state level. Welcome to United States. <laughs> you know, including things like the reclassification of some of these drugs by DEA from a Schedule One drug so that it can actually be prescribed, right? Before that, unless that right. happens can be prescribed right so there is there is of course you know the the science part of it you know treating this as a drug mo- should be right in in many ways this is like any other drug molecule is that that's the the way i look at it you know, if you have a drug molecule and it is useful okay then then we prove it out you scientifically prove it out but there are these additional challenges in this right so you have to get that that legal both on the federal and and the state then and there are already some some you know good steps that are that are sort of happening. Right, multiple drugs have gone through phase two psychedelics. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Great. So there is there is already that built up on uh, on that because this is going to be impacting everyone in this space, not just us, but anyone in this space is going to be impacting them. The third one is coming up with precise prescriptions, uh, prescription guidelines, as well as sort of how this is all structured, because there is going to be that combination of certainly uh, figuring out the right dosage for everyone, but also being able to apply, give it to them in this sort of a clinical setting or in a, um, in a therapist's office, so that you can really work on the person's issues, whatever the, the mental issues are, the mental challenges that the people are, are facing. Because in many ways, to me, it, you know, these are drugs that that sort of make your brain a bit more plastic. So it is now open to being able to look at things that are traumas that you might have experienced in a different mm-hmm. life. So many of these drugs, you know, they, they're they're all is making the brain more open to change. Um, and now, if you're going to allow these drugs, are going to allow you this temporary window in which your brain is open to change. There needs to be someone who's facilitating the right type of change, the right way of looking at these things in in that manner. So all of that sort of comes into it. And that's sort of the final step is developing the right treatment model. You know, how does the 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 right dosage, the right molecules combine with the right sort of therap- therapeutic or therapy setting to be able to get to the outcomes that we want to. It's it's really this this sort of a overall scheme that has to be looked at when um when the the before the drug is going to be really effective and really useful to society um and of course um being being in the u.s all of this has to be reimbursed by insurance at some point <laughs> yeah <laughs> it could be but uh for the dreamer around us uh so if i listen to what you said these drugs, whatever the accreditation or the, uh, the, 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 the way that it's going to be released and approved in the public will never be off counter. They're, they will never be like uh, in mass production by pharmaceutical companies or will they? I think this is step one, right? So eventually, potentially, this is, that's the hopefully the future, right? So this is prescribed as any that drug would be. But the whole part of sort of neuro city um all of these things that you know allow your brain to things differently there has to be some way of being able to change your brain right or, or to guide where your brain to go and that for that there will be some involvement it's not just taking a pill and and everything is is fine there will be a little more uh involvement of a trained psychologist or, or trained therapist that that helps you on that journey, um, and and as we yeah. get into it, and it becomes more more into society, and we see how all of this is playing out. Potentially, maybe there are things in the future where you just take a single drug or a combination of drug molecules, and that's all that's needed. Uh, but at least in the near term, I, I see this is going to be sort of a combination of the drug um, as well as therapy. Yeah, yeah. And 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 let me let me add one thing. That go ahead. You know, we're lucky because ketamine is an FDA approved already. It's being used off label for treatment resistant depression. So we really have one that we can work with today that doesn't have to go through, you know, one of the steps that Anish was talking about, which is, you know, getting the access to these psychedelics because they're uh, illegal or they're scheduled as schedule one. So ketamine is the first one we're working with. But what's so exciting about Dr. Uh, Jatea's 
patent is that you actually are able to put multiple psychedelic compounds together or other complementary compounds. And so oh. that means, yeah, that we could take even a water-based molecule and a lick and a oil-based molecule, which was never really possible before, put those things together in a psychoceutical. And also it allows us to put what I would call complementary compounds. So you can imagine you take one, you know, psychoceutical either topically or drop or nasal, and you're getting, let's say at first you maybe you get an anti-nausea, and then five minutes later some ketamine is released, and then say an hour later some CBG is released. So you really get this complementary benefit that's never been available before. And Boom. uh it's to me that's you know super exciting because yeah, some of the that's a change, yeah, that's a revolution in the way that we treat people and yeah. Uh, and, and probably if we go that way and if it works that way, uh, the uh, assistance from uh, psychotherapists and others will maybe no longer required if you have the whole process control. That's very interesting. But they're reduced, then hopefully uh, eliminated, but certainly reduced. Yep. And, yeah. uh, and, and there's the other element that I think is really exciting is that um, you know, there are combination molecules. You see that, you know, there are people that are doing testing right now with, say, MDMA and LSD, uh -huh, uh -huh. combinations like that. You know, we would allow for that to take place uh, in a single, you know, dose. And what's, what's really exciting is that in the past, this was only really possible with very expensive drugs like a cancer drug. But Dr. Tate and his team at University of Michigan, the breakthrough there was that this is now cost effective. You can make billions of these uh, molecules, all the exact same size, the exact same shape. And, you know, for the medical establishment, that's really the holy grail is having that type of, you know, just consistency and reliability that's never been there for the psychedelic industry as it's been this, you know, kind of taboo underground thing. Uh, and I think, you know, as as we get more and more experience society does with psychoceuticals, um, you know, people are going to be able to do things in combination and so forth that would have been difficult before. They might not have been cost effective. And now, this is really, really cost effective. And that's, you know, as Dr. Today has said at some point, this needs to be, you know, available and billable through the insurance. And so if we can keep these very low cost uh, compounds, low cost, that benefits all of society. And, and the yeah. fear always with psychedelics was that the pharmaceuticals were going to get their hands on it. It was going to all of a sudden be this very expensive thing. And you know, the psychoceutical format means that that's not going to happen. We could be very cost effective in our delivery. That's awesome because that, that that's opened a big door to a better world when uh, a doctor was, was saying it opens uh, uh, our brain and plasticity. Um, Dalai Lama, I think, said that uh, if we had kids me, uh, doing meditation, all kids doing meditation before the age of eight, our world would be without war and uh, a peaceful world. Now, if we can open the brain to everybody with psychedelics, I think that we're getting and we're adding to a better world uh, with more understanding and empathy, like you said before, uh, as Api was saying that uh, um, uh, the experience in psychedelic. So, yeah, I, I, I love the idea. Uh, those molecules, the name is Janus. That's that's the one you were talking about. Janus or Parmaphysic. So Janus, of course, was famous Greek god, right? So it has two faces. Uh, so in the in the science world, that Janus particle has come out for the last maybe fifteen years or so. Uh, people have worked a lot on Janus particles, meaning a single particle that has two faces, and each mm -hmm. of them very different. So it could be two drugs uh, within a single compound. So one could be as as uh, Zappi was saying, maybe some uh, some thing like a psychedelic, another could be, um, say, a cannabis-based comp or something like that, right? So you have, you have two, two uh, different drugs in a single part because you can control where do they go. What we've done is sort of go beyond that to what we call as multi-physics. So where it's not just two phases, but you have three, four, five, six, seven, maybe 10 
um, independent spaces. Yes, sir. Within and so those are the layers that, that Zafi was talking about. So you have um, different layers. So if I'm talking about a microdose, let's say I had to give an overall dosage of 100 micrograms, right? And I could have each layer be 10 micrograms each, and those would be delivered automatically after a period. So you take a single pill, but within the body, each of those layers would come off at a predetermined, but would be after every 15 minutes. Um, so that that's sort of uh, one if you're just working with one drug, but it also allows you to combine different drugs, just as that people were saying. So you might have an mm -hmm. anti medication, then you have sort of a ketamine, and then finally end with a CBG. Really starts allows us to look at synergistic performance of different drugs. There's already studies, um, sort of very relatively um, new studies and relatively on a small scale studies showing how different compounds both. Uh, cannabis and psych psychedelic compounds can be synergistic as well as how different psychedelic compounds themselves can be synergistic targeting different <laughs> brain um, and so this allows us to do that as well having that multiple drugs be delivered um, within a single pill at very well known right uh, it uh and that's the thing, you know, this is the beauty of what you're doing because most of the time people, and I, I, matter of fact, our society is made this way. People are taking a certain drug, like an, uh, um, a, a psychotic drug, uh, Adderall, and then they go, they, they go on hype and to calm down, they're going to take the, the, the reverse drug and uh, even sleep pills. So with your process, you avoid those mix and match that turn to be devastative uh, uh, so the principle of that it's it's quite interesting not only for a lot of other drugs as well I guess uh, yeah absolutely um, so, so we, we initially or at least my group here at the university got in with, for cancer therapy for different cancer right. the, how, how you wanted to operate also allows just like in this case allows us to deliver drugs without um, having it go through the entire body it prevents toxicity it prevents side effects which is a huge thing in cancer therapeutics as well and many of those learnings can sort of translate over here as, um, directly immunotherapy as as well i guess yeah and and i'll add also that the, the second patent that we have that we call neurodirect uh is okay. really amazing because we can use these two patents in combination but what happens is you take a, a compound, say ketamine, for example, you're going to put it at the back of the neck, at the base of the hairline. This is what our pad covers. But what happens is rather than going through the system, it, if you had put that on, you know, the cell because of the oh. patents. Okay, you're back. Sorry for that. I lost a small part of what you said. Okay. I'm sorry for that. That's okay. No, I'll, I'll encapsulate it and just say that in some of our anecdotal testing, uh, when people put the ketamine at the back of the neck, it goes directly in the nerve tissue, directly to the brain, and they don't have a psychedelic experience, but what they get is an immediate sense of calm, and they afterwards, when it metabolizes, they get that neurogenesis that uh, has been proven with ketamine it metabolizes. So it's like for, for children, for the elderly, for all the people who are maybe scared of a psychedelic, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. benefit like uh, I am, yeah. So now yeah. you can access ketamine mm -hmm. without uh, having the experience itself, but get all that neurogenesis. And I, you know, Rick Doblin from Maps, he's one of the you know thought leaders, key thought leaders in the space. And I've had a back and forth conversation with him about you know when is it proper to take the psychedelic experience out mm -hmm. or not, because there is a lot of value in that you know, having a deep psychedelic experience, but we both agree that, hey, you know, elderly, kids, uh, people are afraid. We need to have the option and the optionality to be able to say to somebody, hey, you know, you need this benefit, but you don't necessarily need the psychedelic experience with this, you know, now opens it up to, you know, the entire population. Absolutely. I've been afraid all my life about it. You know, it's some things that I was, I'm, I'm, I'm always been fascinated by the effect just because of the opening of uh, uh, the neuron 
uh, neural connection and the plasticity of the brain, but I've never made the step to try just because I was afraid of the effect or the bad trip or whatsoever. And, and because I'm a freak control of myself, I always thought that it could be a very dangerous thing. But now I listen to this and it opens possibilities. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's uh, the future. So are we going to have people more performer since we opening more uh, plasticity in the brain and giving them the abilities to probably be more creative or more in control of their thought. So we are going to increase the intellectual le level of our society with psychedelic in a way or not that absolutely i would yeah. agree i mean i i'm again i'm not the doctor here i have no doubt you would <laughs> i i and you know a lot of people come to me because like you they're you know they, they're afraid and i think that if you're in the right set and setting and you're and the dosing's appropriate you're not really going to have that but to do this in mass it's going to take a psychoceutical to make people really feel comfortable um, and at the same time, you know, that neuroplasticity that we're talking about, uh, it's such an exciting moment in life where you, you know, you can make new decisions and you can uh -huh. create a new lifestyle for yourself. Um, and that, I don't think that, you know, with all the technology and media and everything coming at us and bombarding us, it's really difficult for people to take a step back and look at things from a third party perspective. And I think that's where psychedelics come in that's going to be the ultimate benefit um and for me you know i've been microdosing psilocybin uh for the last couple of years and what my protocol has been is to do it twice a week and again this is sub perceptual but what i've noticed about myself is on the days that i microdose i have a elevated level of energy and of, of actual joy a kind of a connection to to nature and things but what's really interesting is on the days in between, I find my decision making really, really clear. It's almost like I'm looking at things from, you know, like a, like they say, like 12. Uh, an outside yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm just not caught up in, you know, some of the things that I might have been otherwise caught up in. And I think, you know, for me, I think, you know, microdosing may eliminate all of the antidepressants that are out there today. One. I hope so. Yeah. Just because of the toxicity of all these antidepressants or the uh, SSRI and those molecules are, are, are like not good at yeah. points. That's it. They're, they're, they're always in your system. You know, when you're taking an yeah. SSRI every day, it's affecting, building up and affecting your brain uh, and in that way. And so, you know, the, the half-life of ketamine, I mean, you're talking about a couple hours. So if somebody mm -hmm. like you you know, a ketamine treatment every month or two months is like that is, you know, compare that to taking an SSRI every day, you know, it's apples and oranges. And I think, true, you know, what psychoceutical represents is the ability to have somebody like yourself be able to access all the benefits of psychedelics without necessarily triggering themselves or having to have, you know, a full fledged experience that, you know, maybe you need to press for and do integration yeah. after. You know, you could access it now through psychoceuticals uh, in a way that's very, you know, approachable. Yeah. And you're the uh, live example that uh, it's beneficial since uh, you're, you're kind of the successful story on Wall Street. <laughs> People that, that are chasing fame, that's it. Here's the, here's the uh, uh, example to follow. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I hope so, you know, and, and you would be, you would be very surprised. I have a lot of, you know, Fortune 500 CEOs and people coming to me now. I've been talking oh, so no doubt. corporate events where we'll do put a group of people together and do something that we call a meditation, which is a ketamine enhanced meditation for a group. Yeah. Now, to be able to do it in a psychoceutical format, uh, just makes it that much more effective, that much safer. But the benefit that the corporations are seeing in these executives, it's like, you know, just being able to look at things with new eyes and not, mm. you know, can be yeah. difficult. You know, I, Dr. Today, you know, he's working every day in his lab. I mean, 
you know, uh, he's been working like that his whole life, 20 something patents with that are all a spin off and uh, uh, company. So impressive. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Fortune 500 are paying high price for creativity anyway. So, uh, yes. Yeah. True. The more creative you are today and the more successful you're going to be in, in your career. I, wow. I'm very impressed by this, uh, uh, this, this path that you're taking. And, uh, of course it, it, it was an honor for me to have you today and to explain to, uh, our folks about, uh, psychedelic. I'm still fascinated. Now I'm more open to try it when it's going to be all available. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to call you guys. <laughs> And yeah, and um, you know what? One of the things that I've been asked recently um, was uh, the psychedelic, and uh, everyone chases the state, the, the flow state, like being in the zone. What's your point on that? Is that similar? Or is that different? Yeah, I, I think I think it is. It's very similar because you know a lot of times you know humans we have these you know, filters or these, uh, you know, we're, we're basically like a scanning Brilliant. mechanism. We're just scanning yeah. for danger. And we have these patterns and some of these you may have inherited. You don't even know you have, but you're going the to reptilian be, brain. Yeah. Yeah. Or for yeah, yeah. be some trauma occurred and in that trauma, you're, you know, thinking to yourself some negative thought and you cycle everything through that negativity. Well, now if you can, you know, basically create new neural pathways in the brain, that around those kind of traumas and things, I think that's when you get in flow state because what keeps you out of the flow state is as you're trying to flow, you're going through that filter mechanism and it's disrupting you being in flow. And if you yeah. watch, you know, animals and things like that, they're just, they're in flow. And when you see people really in flow and, you know, in sports or in, you know, in thought and all these things, it's like, yeah, you know, painting, writing, sports, whatever. Yeah, it's true. So, yeah. you know, to me, this is like the real benefit of psychedelics. It's kind of like get somebody back to their original frequency and not, and build these new neural pathways for I'm here and I'm going into the future rather than awesome. dragging the past constantly, which keeps you out of the flow. Yeah, being uh, an immense 24 hours a day, 365 with the creativity and the brain behind it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. It was awesome having you. This video was going to go on my HGTV um, in a couple of days, but uh, I'm going to put the links for your company, for your uh, Instagram and uh, all the links that I have uh, about what you're doing because people need to know what you're doing. It's, it's the future. I'm very grateful for your time, your explanation. And you know what I've loved about it? Everything you said is accessible like the drug that you're delivering through the process you have patented thank you <laughs> thank you guys there. have a great thank day you guys you thank you so much thank you thanks everyone for watching see you soon was an awesome plan